Good morning and welcome to the service with a difference. It is the 5th of June 2022. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, 10 days after his ascension, he has told his disciples to, to wait in Jerusalem for the gift that the Father is going to send them. And today we celebrate how the Holy Spirit was poured out on the believers. We are reading from Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 21 today. It is the story of the Holy Spirit being poured out on the disciples in the beginning of Peter's first sermon. Then we're going to be reading from Romans chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 5 all the way through to verse 17. Um, we, we no longer live according to, to our sinful nature, but we live according to the Spirit of God. And we don't have a spirit of slavery. We have a spirit of adoption, as the Holy Spirit convicts us that we are sons and daughters of God. Then we're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to verse 9. It is the story of the Tower of Babel. And we will also be reading from John chapter 14 as we read from verse 8 to verse 17. Philip says to Jesus, um, you say you're going to the Father, but show us the Father. We want to know who the Father is. Jesus says, Philip, you know, do know the Father. You know me. I'm in the Father. The Father is in me. Um, and if you believe in me, you're going to do everything that I have commanded you, but I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, one who is just like me, who will help you um, to, to do all that I have commanded you to do. And again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. As we come to Pentecost Sunday, we, we continue to reflect on how the resurrection and the ascension are now obviously the pouring out of the Holy Spirit has changed our life. How has it affected the way that we live? And today we recognize that it reminds us that we are not just physical beings, but we are both spiritual and physical. In fact, we are social, intellectual, um, sexual beings. All of that is, is combined in who we are. We are one whole person, not, not bits and pieces. Um, and so as we look at our spirituality today, we, 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 we understand spirituality is the way in which we reflect on our understanding of God. And, and how we, we live out that understanding of God in our lives. Um, even if that means we choose to resist God, or we choose to fight against God, or we choose to deny God, or we, we choose even not to care about God. But as we reflect on our belief in God, as we live out what we believe in God, it is on Pentecost that we first become aware of the intimate nature of the relationship that exists between God and humanity. You know, it's because of Pentecost that we're aware that God is very much involved in the life of the world. Um, it's not something that God has put into place and, and left to its own devices, only sitting in judgment on some side, you know, waiting to, to condemn. But it is something that he is very much involved in. He, he affects change and he is continuously busy with, with creation. He, he's not a separated father. He is a father who is passionately in, in love with us and who is intimately involved in our lives and in the life of, of creation. Um, and so on Pentecost, we see how God pours out his spirit over, over, over his people. And, and, and his spirit is not something we achieve. It's not something we attain. It's something we receive. It's a gift from God to us. Paul says it so nicely in, in Romans, you have received the spirit of, of adoption. You've received the spirit that was given to you and when we receive that spirit and we mature in the spirit when we when we mature into our salvation when we learn how to live as people who are saved we become aware of how god is involved in history um, especially when we notice how he has changed our own histories we become aware that we are a part of god's family and we, we become aware that god is still very busy in the world and when we do become aware of this we we can choose either to work with god or against God, or, or we can even choose, I guess, to sit on, on the sidelines watching God work around us. And so today is the day that the Spirit has come down and our lives have been changed. Today is the day we become aware that God has entered into human history and He has changed everything. God created everything and, and it was good. And then we took over and humanity was on the road to to destruction because whenever we move away from God we, we destroy ourselves. In the in the story of the Tower of Babel, humanity was wanting to become their own gods and they were wanting to relieve God of any responsibility towards humanity. It was a kind of um, you know, thank you for everything that you have done, but but we'll take it over from here. And it 
And as any parent will know, that when a child who is not yet ready for certain things wants to take full responsibility for those things, it can only go downhill. You know, that's that's why we move dangerous chemicals. That's why we move sharp knives. That's why we, we move um, easy-to-operate machinery all out of the way of the child, because when a child gets hold of them and doesn't know what to do with them, um, is the child's going to hurt themselves. The child is going to hurt everybody else around them. And so before we could hurt ourselves, God had to move the cleaning material. He had to move the knives. He had to move the machinery. Um, he had to take us out of Babel so that we could not be our own gods or make ourselves our own gods. And so on Pentecost, we, we become aware that God has intervened in history and he has brought about a change because his kingdom has been realized. His kingdom has always been a part of history, but we were aware that his kingdom is at work even now. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. There is no longer young or old in the kingdom of God. God pours out his spirit and, and everything changes. When Peter in, interpreted the prophecy from, from Joel, we, we see how Peter understands and he has become aware that the world has been turned upside down. Nothing is the same. God has changed the rules and he has changed the rules back to, to his rules. He says even, even, even children and, and servants will prophesy. Those who have had no voice will prophesy. So sons and daughters and male servants, female servants, none of them had a voice. None of them um, counted when they spoke. Now they will speak the very words of God, says Peter. He says, even old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. But the old men should have the visions because they can see what is going to happen from experience. And the young should dream dreams because they're feisty enough to dream dreams. But now even the young will be wise enough to, to, to see what is going to happen. And the old will be feisty enough to be able to dream dreams. He says the world has been turned upside down. Our histories have changed. Our understanding of the world and, and ourselves in the world has changed. And so we become aware that God has entered into human history and he has changed everything. And we also become aware that, that we belong to the family of that God who has changed history. And so we're no longer slaves to, to fear. We're no longer slaves to sin, to death, to worry, to, to wondering if we're going to miss out because we're devoted to God. But we choose to offer ourselves as servants to God um, because we trust God completely. He, he has our best at heart. There is nothing God wants for us that will bring us harm. Um, and so we can trust him completely and, and we serve him because we are so deeply in love with the one who is so deeply in love with us. And we are wanting to serve, not not because we're slaves. We're not slaves. As Paul says to the people in Rome, you no longer have a spirit of slavery, but you have a spirit of, of adoption. The spirit convicts us that we're adopted. We, we find our identity in, in God's family. And as he, as he writes to the people in Rome, as he speaks of adoption, he is drawing from their understanding of adoption because all babies needed to be adopted into a Roman household, even one that was born into the Roman household. You know, if, if they weren't adopted, the baby was taken outside to, to an open area and they were left to die unless somebody else was willing to redeem the baby. And, and I want to say that's not surprising from a people who used the cross as a sign of, of power, you know, from a people who celebrated the Colosseum and who found great pleasure and, and entertainment in, in human suffering. But we know by the Holy Spirit that we are adopted into the family of God. We belong to God. We are loved by God. We are accepted as family. And that's why we can cry out, Father, Father, says Paul to the people of Rome. There's this intimate relationship. You know, as, as children, we, we share in the inheritance of the family because we belong to the family. And the inheritance of the family is, is eternal life. We, we eat from the tree of life. That, that is our inheritance. And that inheritance is, is from God. Life is wherever love is. And that, that is from God. And he says, you're going to share in, in the inheritance of the family, but also know that you're going to share in the suffering that comes from being a part of this family. Um, and the suffering obviously is not from God, but it's from the world. Loss and pain and, and heartache, all of that is a consequence of uh, wanting to be our own gods. What they wanted to do in, in Babel when they were building the tower that was going to reach into heaven so that they could become their own gods. And so we know that we belong to the family of God because the Holy Spirit has made us aware of that. And we also become aware that God is still at work and we are able to make the choice of whether we are going to work with God or not. When Jesus has the conversation with his disciples on the night that he is betrayed about how he's going to the Father, he's going to come back and fetch them to be where he is. 
and that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, Philip says to him, show us the Father. You know, that's going to be enough for us. How will we know the Father? And then he is saying this because what Jesus is saying is quite confusing and it's quite difficult for them. And they're, and they're just actually asking for something to, to hold on to. And so Jesus says, I'll ask the Father and, and he's going to send another counselor, one who is just like the first one. Christ is the first one. And, and he will be with you forever. He, he is the spirit of truth. He will remind you of everything I've said. He will um, remind you of everything that I have done. Um, and so those who believe in me, those who believe in me, he says, will, will keep my commands. They will do my work and they will pray as, as I pray. Um, they will even do more than me because they are so much greater. They are so much larger. The number of believers will have a greater effect on the world. And so I will do whatever you ask, he says. And he can still do whatever we ask because we're not asking for our own survival. We're not asking for our own advancement. We're asking for the sake of the people of God, for the souls of those who are lost in the mess of the world that we have created. So Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit as a gift. It's a grace. It, it's for us. It's, it's for our benefit so that no, we know that we are loved by God. And then he empowers us to be God's agents in the world. And he gives us gifts for that. Um, and those gifts that he gives us are for the sake of, of others. The gift needed at Pentecost was the gift of tongues. And, and that was so that all the people could hear the gospel. And every gift we have is exactly what is needed for the people around us to be able to, to, be able to hear the gospel. Our gifts help people make sense of their experience of God. And so every year we, we celebrate Pentecost. Um, it was known at the time as the Feast of Weeks or the Harvest Festival. And we celebrate it especially today because the Spirit has come down and He has begun the harvest. You know, 3,000 were converted that day. Um, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but, but the workers are few, says Scripture. But the Spirit is still in control of the harvest. We, we're simply the instruments. We don't convert people. The Holy Spirit does the converting. We simply work the ground. How has your life changed? Paul says it again so nicely in Romans 10, verse 15, as he quotes from Isaiah 52, verse 7, where he says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And even in the face of undeniable evidence, there are those who are not going to accept the, the good news. Um, there were those who said at the day of Pentecost, they have had too much wine to drink. But there were those who recognized the work that God was doing. There are many who are, who are starving for the good news. And they've got no one who's going to share it with them. And so I want to encourage you today, pray. Pray unceasingly for the Holy Spirit to fill you. Pray unceasingly for the Holy Spirit to convict you, for the Holy Spirit to convert you, for the Holy Spirit to, to empower you, to, to use you for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of the souls of those who are lost in this mess of a world that we have created. Pray with me. And so, Lord God, you, you have breathed your spirit into us and you have made it so that we can never be satisfied without you. You have made it that we are hollow and empty without you. And so as we give you thanks for that, Lord, for, for the knowledge that we can't live anywhere except in your presence, we ask this day and we ask every day, Lord, that that would fill us with your Spirit once again. Lord, pour out your Spirit on us so that we will proclaim your continued presence, that we would live into our continued transformation. Lord God, pour out your Spirit so that we and all of creation will be able to rest in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.